Hello and welcome. Today we're going to draw a cartoon dragon. We're going to start with thinking about how to pose him. We're then going to start using the pencil or doing the underdrawing uh, where we start roughing him in um, just to make sure that we get the, the, the correct element of fun and silliness in this dragon because he's not meant to be a scary dragon. So we'll be doing the underdrawing, then we'll be uh, inking over the top, adding the colour at the end and that will be your lesson for the day and I think you're going to learn a lot from this, it's going to be really good fun. Um, you'll see a time lapse of the whole thing happening the way I drew it and then I'm going to draw another version of the same dragon. So let's go to it. So here we are, blank sheet of paper, and we're going to draw our dragon. Um, we're going to do the underdrawing first. But so what I'll do is I'll, I'll just start with his uh, with the, with the eyebrows, which are kind of scaly eyebrows. They're not eyebrows like you and I would have. This dragon is going to be dancing. Um, so we've got to be thoughtful about that uh, and show him kind of enjoying himself. He's dancing as though he's at a party. So give him his proper dragon's eyes like that with that kind of a and make sure the eyes aren't exactly the same size either because it's much more fun when you show him um if you like in his in his enjoyment and, and not not being self-conscious or anything like that so he's slightly uh yeah uh, well he's just enjoying himself he's having a dance so we're drawing like this i'm showing you a particular style of drawing where you by, by the way you do the, the lines on it, you, you kind of show the contours. This is in the underdrawing, it's not in the overdrawing. Um, so let's have his mouth. Again, I don't want to centre it, I don't want it to be the same on either side because that's not how nature is. Give him his nice big teeth like this. And then another couple down below just for good measure. Um, and now we'll 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 do the underdrawing to show. Here comes his neck, and remember I said he's he's actually having a dance. Now he's he's a fairly bulbous, he's a fairly bulbous body. Does our dragon like this? And so what we're trying to do is we get some movement. His energy line goes like that, and so down down here we're going to take a leg, um, and. There you are, and we'll put a foot on it. We'll start with the toes, of which this dragon only has three, but that's apparently quite natural for dragons. So I've read somewhere. So here he is. He has a. I like to draw him with a kind of a semi human foot because that kind of registers with us. In fact, I'm not really happy with that foot. So again, we're in the underdrawing stage here. We've got plenty that we can do. Um, to you know, we can we can easily change what we're doing. I need to get him up on his toes a little bit. That's that's what's missing here. So uh, do the leg like this, and then going back underneath him a bit, and then his foot comes down, and here are his toes. A lot depends on how you visualise this, you know. Um, you have to have in your mind how, for instance, how a person might look if they were doing this same sort of a move, you know. Um, so there he is with uh, with uh, one foot planted. We'll, we'll, we'll do this with the foot. The foot is going to be up and right where we can see it. Would he be dancing like that? Is that is that a good dancing foot? I'm not much of a dancing man myself, so I don't think it probably is all that good. So again, because we're doing the underdrawing, we can we can play with this quite nicely. Um, let's take his leg 
out like that and, uh, and down a bit like that and then we can bring his foot up let's just draw right over our markings and because again I keep, I keep stressing about the underdrawing being as important as it is so now we've got him doing his, he's doing a kick dance of some sort or a kick step in a dance it's probably more accurate to say and um, we're going to give him this this arm is going to be out here but but I'm going to have him holding a drink in his hand so we'll just draw the drink and we'll make it slightly on you know in jeopardy slightly as it often is if anyone tries to dance with a glass in their hand and I'm going to give him this sort of dainty little finger pointing out this way um, as though he's uh, you know at a, at a tea party being all dainty there's the, the arm goes in behind like that um, it's probably got its elbow point about there so we can do all this you know we can say elbow right there we can do all this because this is the this is the underdrawing it's not the overdrawing so now let's take his arm his other arm out here and give his hand a, a kind of a, again a kind of a slightly silly aspect because we want it to be funny what well, say funny nobody's going to be rolling on the floor laughing but we want it to if somebody looks at it we want their first expression to be a smile on their face and, as they kind of get what's going on one two three four yeah we need another so what I do there it's not really a finger I haven't drawn a finger and if you put your own hand up like that against a, in front of a mirror you'll see that you can't see all your fingers so that's quite significant now let's get a proper outline on him I want him quite bulbous because he's more amusing when he's bulbous so we'll put it just draw it straight through straight through his arm that's not important at the moment okay we've got the idea now we'll have his tail because dragons of course have to have tails we'll bring it out over here all my lines at the moment are quick because I want there to be vitality in what I'm doing and this last sort of detail a dragonish detail these are the scales or the, the markings on the dragon that, that set him apart um, these here will be his special dragon markings that uh, somebody calls them scales I don't know that they're scales exactly but they are the markings that you would find of course on any dragon should you happen to meet one anytime soon um, we use the shapes in such a way that we can see that he's a rounded sort of a fellow like this very round and bring these scales down underneath so here we are we've got something of a dancing dragon we need to just sort of take a step back and look at it and say is it is it good I'm not keen on that foot if I'm honest um, because I'm using digital I can cheat here and sort of slightly rescale that foot it's very clever stuff isn't it but there you are Yeah, a bit happier with that. And I also think perhaps his head ought to be just a little bit smaller. Like that. And I think I'll just... Which way shall I go? That way. like that that suits me at the moment and get rid of these controls and the program I'm using by the way is clip studio paint um, which you can download uh, from wherever you like to get stuff um, now again because I'm doing it like this and on the digital I can 
just knock that layer back a little bit and then I'm going to pick up a, a pen I have it set as a mapping pen um, and the, the equipment I'm using allows for the, the pressure that I put on my pen changes the thickness of the line just as it would if you were using your pen if you again I'm assuming that you're not using digital but um, if you're using an ordinary pen the harder you press the thicker the line that's that's the way it is so now dragon nostrils let's put them a little bit closer together because obviously at certain points in this dragon's life he wants to shoot flames out of there doesn't he and he wants them close together so they can concentrate fire in a particular direction um, yeah, I'm quite happy with him at the moment let's give him his nice teeth in ink now uh, like this we'll take the lines well let's let's put his arms in now I mean I've got there you see the line went nice and thick as I wanted it to there it just varies things in such a way that you get more expression into it and uh, now let's give him his uh, big thick line down there because he's it's kind of heavy and it, it, it works better to do it that way lighter lines on the top scale of things and thicker lines underneath on the lower ends I feel like his tail I want it to look heavy so there it goes it looks fairly heavy doesn't it let's get back up to this glass and uh, not forgetting the little claws that he has poking out of the end of his fingers he doesn't have uh, fingernails like you or I not that I've got many because I've always been a terrible chap for chewing his fingernails and so that's my little problem but anyway here's our man now you can see his arm out I would say to myself that maybe that arm isn't thick enough just looking at it uh, so I'm going to redo this part and thicken it up a little bit I don't mean the line necessarily I just mean the the weight of the arm itself there you go that's a bit better over back on the other side to the hand that's outstretched as he's dancing you'll find that I mean you're probably looking at this thinking oh, he's drawing a hand without too much thought and it's true and the reason for that quite simply is that I've practiced and practiced and practiced hands they're so important they give such um, um, character and emotion to any of anything that you draw or any person that you draw hands are part of body language aren't they and you need to get them as right as you can get them. you need them to be what you what you want to express I suppose is the best way of putting it um, so I, I made it my business uh, some years ago just to spend hours and hours and hours looking at the way other cartoonists draw hands and even indeed classical artists you know not just cartoonists um, because you can learn from everybody and I can also tell you time spent in the company of watching in the company of an expert and watching what that expert does doesn't matter what he or she is doing your time is never wasted there's always people to learn from no matter what they're doing if it's drawing pictures or flower arranging or doing gymnastics anything really beautiful to see experts at work um, now let's get this this arrangement in here comes down like that this is his uh, sort of scaliness and we start that because if he was looking up there would be scales all the way up to underneath his chin we're calling them scales still I'm not really sure what they are but they're the kind of markings that, uh, that dragons have of course as we all know as I've said before uh, and remembering that we, we need a certain 
contourness here so start bringing the lines closer together when you get underneath and then they can open up a little bit more as it goes along the tail and we'll make that into a kind of a, a strip behind the tail so now here we are um, we've done that and we can now look there you are that's taking away if, you, if you're working with a pen and ink you, you achieve this by going over it with your eraser um, now, obviously if we let's show them like this there's a bit of movement in it um, but now we're going to go and put in some color so um, which is which is always good fun uh, choose a, I need a, a, a basic green for him which ought to be a slightly muddy browny green really let's choose that yeah that should do it yeah um, I can close in on him here to do this coloring um, we'll, we'll have a we put a color in the background here when we're using digital and the main reason is that you want to see that you filled in all your space or you know you're not leaving any white gaps well that's a bit strong don't really fancy working looking at that so we'll take it to a blue I think still a bit bright a bit heavy on the eye that that's a bit that's easier now okay so um, yes this is our color layer so let's start filling them in now I need the brush size fairly big brush density big using a brush pen yet yeah, all the settings are correct for me so now I'm going to color him in you can be as detailed or not detailed as you like um, you know you might want to put loads of shading on him and everything but for this for the purpose of what we're doing here what I'm trying to show you is how you build it up from the ground if you like um, from a, from just a, a few scrapes on the paper the, the, the pencil work the underdrawing which I'm really big on and you get through to this point now what I have tended to do in the past is just color as I go but I get a bit more careful these days and go for the the main color that is sort of behind everything first like this so we do all this green Sometimes you need to just, uh, it's very therapeutic when you get to the colouring stage. And you, I mean, I'm, I'm doing this, giving you uh, some idea of how it all works with this sort of instruction level. Um, but if I was doing this by myself, typically uh, I would just be very quiet, probably have my tongue poking out the corner of my mouth because I'm uh, liable to do that sort of thing when I'm concentrating. Um, and I wouldn't be saying anything to anybody but here we are you've got to watch me doing this so I'm going to tell you what I'm thinking about while I'm doing it um, I don't know what colour dragons actually are the only sort of real dragon that I know about that exists in the real world is called the Komodo dragon which is a fearsome creature which lives on the island of Komodo um, and I've got a feeling they're kind of brown really but I I like the idea that when you get a you know this, this could have been a red dragon couldn't it we could have done it any color we wanted because we're in charge we're doing the cartoon so you know we can decide at all stages what color everything is I probably will put some shading on this but um, it's not really what the what the sort of session is all about the session is about how you 
get an idea in your mind, say a dancing dragon, you think about how people dance and especially how they dance badly because we're not looking for elegance here, we're just looking for a dragon who's uh, basically being a bit silly but he's exuberant and he's happy. Um, that's really what we're looking for here. I'm pretty sure that the scaly stuff down the middle of him should be yellow. It just feels to me that on a on a dragon it should always be yellow. Can't really tell you why. If you've got other thoughts on it, let me know. But um, yeah, this chap is going to have a yellow down the middle, but I must finish off all the green first. It's kind of a muddy green, isn't it? I didn't want it to be a bright green. And this is where you can see the colour in the background is telling me for sure whether I've left any spaces. White doesn't doesn't really tend to do that very well. Uh, you can end up, you know, leaving leaving some quite bad spaces. Um, you know white bits that, that stick out um, so now I want some black it occurs to me that I've uh, that, that the black lines on this need to be need to be made more black so probably um, we'll edit the next minute or so as I try and sort that out so bear with me um, well we're going to put some black into his uh, into his mouth now um, just for depth really I don't, want, I don't want to show you know the anatomy of his mouth or anything like that that's not that's not the point he's just a good old dragon having fun and we don't want to see his tonsils or anything at the moment Uh, teeth less obvious but that's okay they don't need to be perfect they're dragon teeth after all so they're going to look like that um, we'll put the white into his eyes too while we've got the white here yeah um, like that. Now um, we'll give him his, his yellow for his um, sort of underbelly uh, colour. Yeah, that's yeah, that's about it. Um, need a slightly larger brush to do this. Uh, yeah, that that'll do me. That's that's a good enough colour for our dragon. Might be a bit bright, but it's okay. It's all right. We're okay with that. Yeah, need a bigger brush still, I think. Or as the thing, I press on it. It's nice and big, and if I don't press, if I'm gentle with it, it'll be quite a, a thin line. So it's probably best to do it this way. Try not to go over the edges. Although, as you can see, with digital stuff, everything's. Um, Everything's a lot uh, more forgiving when you when you foul up, which I do all the time. But I don't care; doesn't matter one bit. Mm. Let's get some of that green again and uh, just cover up that little error there. That's uh, <laughs> yeah, smaller brush, please. That's it. Cover up the little errors that we've accidentally included. Um, I think I'd like to give him a, a bit of ground to be walking on, or at least put a shadow under him to show what he's up to. Uh, no, we don't want him to be 
off the floor. We want him to be there, just about there. The ball of his foot is on the ground and the shadow of him goes way out like this, keeping it horizontal um, so as to correctly show that he's on solid ground. Um, well, we're going to put some black into his uh, into his mouth now, um, just for depth, really. I don't, want, I don't want to show, you know, the anatomy of his mouth or anything like that. That's not that's not the point. He's just a good old dragon having fun. And we don't want to see his tonsils or anything at the moment. Uh, teeth less obvious but that's okay they don't need to be perfect they're dragon teeth after all so they're going to look like that um, we'll put the white into his eyes too while we've got the white here yeah um, like that. Now um, we'll give him his, his yellow for his um, sort of underbelly uh, colour. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's about it. Um, need a slightly larger brush to do this. Uh, yeah, that, that'll do me. That's, that's a good enough colour for our dragon. Might be a bit bright, but it's okay. It's all right. We're okay with that. Yeah, need a bigger brush still, I think. Or that's the thing. I, I press on it; it's nice and big. And if I don't press, if I'm gentle with it, it'll be quite a, a thin line. So it's probably best to do it this way. Try not to go over the edges. Although, as you can see, with digital stuff, everything's. Um, Everything's a lot uh, more forgiving when you when you foul up, which I do all the time. But I don't care; doesn't matter one bit. Mm. Let's get some of that green again and uh, just cover up that little error there. That's uh, <laughs> yeah, smaller brush, please. That's it. Cover up the little errors that we've accidentally included. Um, I think I'd like to give him a, a bit of ground to be walking on, or at least put a shadow under him to show what he's up to. Uh, no, means we don't want him to be off the floor. We want him to be there, just about there. The ball of his foot is on the ground and the shadow of him goes way out like this keeping it horizontal um, so as to correctly show that he's on solid ground that could be enough I mean okay we should we should do something with his glass I suppose let's uh, let's pretend it's pewter or you know some kind of uh, something like pewter because that way um, we don't have to draw re you know reflections and it will show what's inside it so we'll make it a grey put it on the colour layer full okay we'll do it as grey like this Now you've, I've shown you the um, 
the time lapse version of doing this and um, the time lapse version is only a few seconds long but it did take something like this amount of time to do there's one thing I want to just give you some thoughts on um, firstly shading because I, I quite like the idea of shading in, in a crosshatch um, and one of the things about it, if I just go to down in it where his tail starts, I've got to shade this with a thin nib of a pen and go all the way along his tail, but trying to keep my lines going around the contour that we've established with with his um, uh, with his body uh, and with his scaly parts. See now, and then we can do the same sort of thing on the heel like this, um, just so that we're suggestive of of three dimensions. The leg also needs need. I say needs. You know, it's up to you what you want to do and the level of detail you want. If you if you watch things like The Simpsons or South Park or anything like that, you never get anything as involved as this in it. So you don't need this. It's just a question of personal taste and how well you want to do it. I quite like it. it it's, to me it gives a, a feeling that you that you kind of you know you kind of care about the picture a bit more but sometimes it's all about the gag rather than the picture and so these things aren't uh, aren't important. Um, you know I'll put a, if you look at his bottom lip where I'm working away now a little bit of a shadow there um, I, I could have done it in a different way, but this is the way that I've chosen to show you today. Um, so here we have our, our Jolly Dragon, uh, which we've drawn, which I've drawn, stop being patronising, which I've drawn um, in such a way that I think you could understand it yourself. Now, what I'd really love is if you could do one yourself, whether it's a, a paper, or a pen and ink, or whatever it might be, however you choose to do it, um, it would be fantastic to see what you can produce uh, having watched this and whether it's sort of inspired you in any way to, to produce your own work. So there you go, that's the, that's the film for the moment. Um, I would suggest, if, if this has been useful to you, if you think it's good, if it's, if it's helped you out, given you some pointers and some ideas, do hit the subscribe button and the like button. Spread this around. It helps me, helps me make better films, helps me buy better equipment to do better films as well, eventually, I hope. Um, so, yeah, I'll be very grateful if you can subscribe and share and like and all that. And then um, I'll, I'll see a, um, uh, you'll see a new film come up uh, at the end of this, a link for you to go and learn some more stuff about how to draw some wonderful things. So thanks for watching. See you again soon.